You might think that Fashion Week is all about the big designers, but I spoke to some independent ones about how their work is being displayed here at New York Fashion Week. I'm Victoria Gonzalez and I have all the details coming up. Fashion for dogs and people. Anthony Rubio is bringing you the latest. I'm Elizabeth Perkin and I'll have all the details coming up. Welcome to our WEBN special presentation, New York Fashion Week 2020, a walk down the runway. I'm Kristen Bullier. And I'm Martha Constantinides. We're taking you on the runway and behind the scenes from some of this year's biggest fashion shows in New York City. New York Fashion Week is an eight-day long fashion event showcasing the newest and boldest looks from the designers across the world. This series of shows began way back in 1943 and has grown to become one of the four biggest fashion occasions in the world, following Paris, London, and Milan. From independent designers to big name labels, it's where the public has the chance to see the international's collections for the first time. The prestigious walk down the runway only happens twice a year. We'll meet some of the up and coming designers showcasing their work, learning about the social causes inspiring them, and seeing a variety of their clothes and styles. WEBN presents our 2020 New York Fashion Week special, A Walk Down the Runway. All of the designers premiering their collections this time of year have their own ways of standing out. Household designers rallied guests and surprised crowds with pops of feminine color, rebellious touches, and flirty fabrics. Let's go to our reporter Samantha Johns who spoke with Nicole Miller, a designer who is all about sustainability. Nicole Miller brought rock and royalty to New York Fashion Week for her fall 2020 collection. Motivated by Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's shocking Megxit, she fully embraces the idea of being a renegade. And the show's called Rock and Royalty, and you know, it's kind of a spoof on the rebellious royals and rock and roll. The collection infused with British rock influence of the 70s includes pieces intended to break down gender barriers celebrating the underground music scene in London. And the other nod is um, my nod to David Bowie, who is in The Man Who Fell to Earth which was about him bringing water back to his own planet because his planet ran out of water. Miller, who's encouraged her fans to be more sustainably minded in the past, proved she's practicing what she preaches with her latest designs. I did use these old recycled um, hard rock t-shirts. So I thought that was kind of like a nod to rock and roll. So I, I used those. And so those will be vintage and they'll be like uh, one of a kinds. I caught up with actress and dancer Janine Mason after the show to hear how fashion brings out her confidence side. I, you know, I feel like the fashion stuff, I love it, I'm such an admirer of it, but I know the stuff that feels good to me and it's always the things that are feminine, the things that like feel like they celebrate my body. From New York, Samantha Johns, WEBN News. Thanks Sam. It looks like Nicole Miller's latest collection is something for us to keep our eyes out for. Let's now go to our reporter Elizabeth Perkin who sat down with Anthony Rubio who is putting dogs at the forefront of his latest collection. We bring the dogs in and the dogs are the models, the uh, people are the accessories I like to say but everybody's important. Longtime designer Anthony Rubio is dressing more than just people. He told me the inspiration behind this year's collection. I wanted to bring back um, some retro looks so there's like some flapperish things you know I like to incorporate some cultural things into my work all the time and there's even a, a dress with a feminist message sequence dominated the runway as the models and dogs strutted their stuff but it's about more than just the clothes Rubio told me how including dogs looking for the forever homes is important to him we even have some rescue dogs from um, Puerto Rico the Sato project uh, that are walking the runway as well because that's close to my heart and we like to represent and be the voice for those who cannot speak. Flying Solo isn't just a retail store. There are also a group of over 70 different designers brought together under one name to showcase their creativity. Our reporter Victoria Gonzalez sat down with a few of the independent designers. Flying Solo is filled with designers that showcased a variety of collections that ranged from sunglasses to dresses. Flying Solo provides a platform for independent designers to shine during New York Fashion Week. Around 70, sometimes it's around 90 designers. Each designer has eight looks. So we have um, 80 models in a show that goes like around four or five times. 
The head stylist, Stasi Verzalski, works behind the scenes with designers to make sure the fashion shows run as smoothly as possible. We have two shows, one is ready to wear, one is couture, so we are very interested in like collections of different culture that represent people, that represent their uh, interests of their countries. Romanian designer Alexandra Popescu York designs glamorous pieces that offer rare fabrics in unique colors. I consider fashion a branch of art and I think it's this is a new generation of couture, a new generation of luxuries. A romantic twist was also brought to the runway by bridal designer Lily Rivera with her collection of wedding dresses. My inspiration is the bride. So what I've done is taken all the, the wish lists and the needs and the, the technical things that come into play when I'm working with brides and understanding what they look for and what they need for fit and comfort and at the same time what they need as far as glam. Aside from clothing, designer Gabrielle Saifi makes her own fashion rules with her sunglasses brand called Fancy Troubles. So many people put them on and, and try them on and, and look at themselves in the mirror and say, wow, like, is this me? I feel really great and that, that just makes my heart burst. It's, it's the best thing when, someone, when something that you make makes someone feel, feel that good. The Flying Solo Fashion Show proved the company's dedication of showing diversity in fashion. For WBN News, I'm Victoria Gonzalez. All these independent designers hope to continue creating pieces to help transform people's confidence and make them feel like the best version of themselves. Live in the studio, I'm Victoria Gonzalez. Thanks, Victoria. We will have more from Flying Solo later on. I attended Rebecca Minkoff's Fall Winter Fashion Show, where new moms were front and center. It's actually very, I would say, humbling because she's in charge of everything. Like She's kicking right now, so I'm kind of kicking with her. Minkoff's collection was filled with beautiful, vibrant colors for spring and summer, all inspired by her pregnancy and being a mom. Model Janelle Simon is pregnant and says the collection makes her happy. But it's great. It's great energy. Even looking around, it just puts you in a great mood. Very accommodating. And we have water and ice cream. Where else can you find that on a fashion show in New York City? We're getting some real summer vibes here at Rebecca Minkoff's 2020 New York Fashion Week presentation. The pinks, yellows, and blues are bringing youth back into fashion as she's serving ice cream to audience members. I love like the chic bohemian vibe, but she's also celebrating like being a mom and a mom on the go. I love that. Actress Victoria Justice came to support Minkoff's latest collection. Minkoff greeted guests during the presentation and took pictures with close friends and family members. Minkoff really brought summer early this winter season and made statements with her new youth collection. That's for sure, Martha. It seems like Rebecca Minkoff is really expanding her work after becoming a mother herself. Now let's go to Maria Sato, who spoke with the mom behind Definity Fashion, one of the lines featured on the Flying Solo show. Maria? Flying Solo is a retail store and company that supports independent designers from all around the world. Not only are the designers here passionate about fashion, but some are working for a greater cause. My collection is using lots of different colors and fabrics and prints to show that clashing can actually be beautiful, just like people. Emma Altman designs cruelty-free and vegan clothes. The New York-based designer volunteers internationally teaching refugee women how to sew. Teaching sewing to these women who are, you know, they're in, you know, it's so difficult to get out of these refugee camps right now and to start a new life, like, you know, where they came from, they can't go back, and just teaching women um, skills that they can use to work in um, the next place that they get seek asylum, I think is really important. So that's something that I do um, to help women and empower women to feel confident about themselves and be able to survive in this crazy world. Jib Abatoy is another flying solo designer who supports women. She is a Nigerian immigrant living in Canada with her three young children. Um, two years ago when I went back home, I kind of saw the economic condition was kind of way worse than I left it five years before and I thought I should start a business where I can give back to the community so our brand is really I designed the styles uh, but I got my tailors and my production in Nigeria and that's really to, to empower women and families you know so we kind of got a social responsibility angle to our business. Last year the independent designer launched her line Divinity Fashion with the motto Be Fearless Be Divine. Stepping into a room and turning heads and people are like, who does she think she is? As a survivor of domestic violence, Abitoy donates a portion of her profit to a local Canadian organization that supports other victims. Reporting from New York, this is Maria Sato, WBN News.
Thanks, Maria. When we return, we'll dive into some of the shows and designers with some great causes behind their collections. And I spoke with the producers of Fashion Life Tour who gave us an exclusive on what it meant for them to include trans models in the show. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to our New York Fashion Week special. Even though fashion was the week's main event, some of the work designers did went beyond the runway. Yes, Martha. We saw three shows where activism shined the light on important issues close to the hearts of many designers. I got the chance to attend the Fashion Life Tour where their main goal was inclusivity and diversity. And We have everyone in all forms and shapes of life exuding their love and creativity, so it was important for me to make it known that it's a possibility for you to live that dream too. While the organization is new, the Fashion Life Tour has proven they are made for the big stage and are focused on making fashion for all people. Carol Bellum, producer of the Fashion Life, gave us some insight on what inspired her. Seeing how times were changing and understanding the platform that we were given, we wanted to just pay homage to that more and give these kids a real dream and a real understanding of what it means to go after it, no matter what anything manifests into, to just go for what you believe in and believe in yourself that you can do that. We're here at the Fashion Life Tour where they'll be promoting inclusivity and diversity with their models. We spoke to Kiara Bellin who gave us some insight on her inspiration for the tour. I really do have to attribute both of our roots and, and give homage to Tyra Banks who, Tyra, Tyra we love you, model mama number one who kind of um, set the tone and laid the groundwork for that to happen. As a model, she knew the ins and outs of the field, but paid homage to her daughter and her role model Tyra Banks for pushing her to where she is today. Many people in attendance were interested in the show because of the diversity in the presentation. I feel like the fashion industry is kind of changing to kind of have a more diverse outlook on the models, so um, more ethnicity on the runway, more different kind of body types on the runway. So I'm here um, to kind of see it firsthand because I've been researching it all year. The Fashion Life Tour is filled with diversity from head to toe to match the fashion designs presented in the show. Producer and models Kiara Bellin and Kenya Hill wanted the runway to be for all. So I think it was crazy, not even with just these events that were surrounded by causes that mentioned their causes like right from the beginning. I saw a diversity. I mean, we saw diversity throughout so many different, even the, even the makeup event that we went to. I mean, diversity yeah. was everywhere and inclusion. So it was beautiful, truthfully, especially in the fashion industry where everyone is usually you see fashion, you're like, oh, the same model over and over again. And there's always the issue of, oh, um, you have to be this specific right. size or the specific person to get in. So it's right. really nice seeing the diversity and inclusivity in all the fashion shows and how they're really trying to push that forward. Yeah. And you don't always wear the same clothes with with, diff, you know, different body types, different clothes look better, look, look not. So I think it was awesome. Our Causes correspondent Victoria Gonzalez is here to share the deeper meaning behind some of these designers. Thanks ladies. Designers were using their platforms for more than just showcasing their collections. They were bringing awareness to causes dear to their hearts. The brand Ana Ono empowers women who have undergone a mastectomy. The event was named Fearless to honor all breast cancer survivors like the models who walked the runway and embraced their bodies after diagnosis and treatments. Designers like Dana Donofrey express the importance of addressing this topic in fashion as one out of every three women is diagnosed with breast cancer. Listen, cancer doesn't discriminate. We can't either. We actually don't even try to do it. These women come forward. We had 500 nominated women this year for the show. It's important to us to show somebody, somebody that they can associate with. So we're so thrilled that that was your takeaway, that you saw yourself out there. And that's what it means to really come together as a community. We all need to be there together. Sustainability was huge at the shows we attended. Designers showed us how they created new clothes from recycled materials. So upcycling is um, a sustainable way to keep your um, clothing longer, to keep it from out of the landfill. And so upcycling could be changing the buttons on something, it could be removing the cuffs, it could be adding a collar, it's anything that you do to a garment to um, give it a longer life. Shopping smart is, is how you start, 
So if it's something that you know that you only want because it's cute for that moment, it means you really shouldn't make that purchase. Um, what you should be buying are things that you know that's going to be a staple item in your closet that's going to last and it can go with different things, that is diverse. And another way to be sustainable is to, like I said, swap with friends. You could change, you can pass down to a niece or a cousin. The whole point is that you don't throw the item away. There are a million other options you have before you do that. Those are some of the shows with causes at this year's New York Fashion Week. Back to you ladies at the desk. Thanks, Victoria. I had the opportunity to attend Coastal Fashion Week where 15 different designers came together for one cause. Coastal Fashion Week is determined to aid those who need assistance. If you or anyone you know needs to talk to someone, you can call 1-800-273-8255 to get help. Fashion Week is not only about glitz and glam, and we were able to see this through the awareness these designers have raised with their collections. Don't go anywhere, because when we get back, our accessories correspondent Maria Sato is here to break down the latest trends. And some of the biggest celebs spoke with us at New York Fashion Week. Stay tuned. Welcome back to WEBN's 2020 New York Fashion Week special, a walk down the runway. As we all know, fashion isn't just about the clothes you're wearing. Nope, Martha, what goes on your face is just as important as what goes on your body. I went into Artistry Studios Tokyo pop-up event to see what inspired some of their runway looks. Cherry blossoms and shades of pink transported guests at Artistry Studios pop-up event from New York City into Tokyo. The brand was there for New York Fashion Week to share their latest makeup collection. Creative director Rick DeCecca was there to help do the model's makeup for Fashion Week. Yesterday, you know, we had a very, very diverse group of models for the show. And I was able to, you know, create multiple looks with the, there's, this set, there's this particular compact and another one. And with the shades, I was able to create a really beautiful, you know, sort of bronzy, smoky look on multiple skin tones. Julianne Green is a makeup artist, and one of her favorite products helped get the models backstage runway ready. And it was just great, you know, being backstage and seeing the models and being able to use the Tokyo collection on them. One of my favorite products is the face compact, actually, and it comes with multiple products in one. So, for example, this compact, it has two color correctors and it has a foundation color that you can use as a concealer or a foundation for your overall face. The whole idea behind this Tokyo inspired line is women on the go. One of the products that they're featuring is this powdered blush that with one swipe, it's on. So I am a woman on the go. I'm a mother. I am a makeup artist. I am a freelancer. So I feel like this collection is amazing because they have an eyeshadow palette, but also has a lip gloss and lipstick on it. So I think that's everything that I need for me just to go. Artistry's pop-up event was in the same city its very first collection was named after, Studio NYC. The experience was a full circle moment for the beauty brand. Every collection of theirs is inspired by trending cities all around the world, and I'm excited to see where they'll go next. It's all about how you accessorize, from rings and necklaces to sunglasses and headbands. Our correspondent Maria Sato has all the details on how to detail. Thank you, Martha. Yes, it was definitely an accessory-filled week. When we go to fashion shows, we mainly focus on clothes, but these designers say accessories play an important role as well. We talked to Gabrielle Saifi about her sunglasses brand, Fancy Troubles, which was featured in Flying Solo's Runway. The name derives from when her grandfather advised her to stay away from fancy troubles. I've always loved sunglasses. I've, I have a lot of them. Uh, I think they're also just a really easy way to enhance any outfit. They look good during any season. It's not something um, that kind of expires in any way. I wanted uh, something unique in each of the glasses, so something that didn't already exist. So I didn't have to wait around for another designer to create something that I wanted. One thing that we're starting um, on Instagram and our website is we want to feature uh, different people of all walks of life and kind of hone in on what their fancy trouble is. 
Next, we talked to Christine Joy, who just started her crystal accessory line last year. The Bay Area-based designer aims to create everyday jewelry that sparks joy. She says with each crystal, every piece has a significant meaning. These, they have a significant meaning in the ancient time because of its color and also the spiritual meaning. So that piece works well with um, a third eye and a crown chakra, so it's perfect for earrings and necklace. Lastly, we talked to the designer behind Nadine by Nadia about her edgy, chic, and versatile accessories. The 60s and 70s inspired designer says her versatile pieces can be used as a necklace, choker, or bracelet. Kind of mixed in to unstigmatize the whole spiked leather jewelry to make it look elegant. It can be elegant and chic at the same time, and it's versatile. That's all I have for accessories. Back to you guys at the desk. And on the topic of accessories, we're going to take a look into this ultra cool event I went to during Fashion Week featuring all handmade jewelry. The line led out the door for Midori Linnea's jewelry event this weekend during New York Fashion Week. And designer Sakura told us why accessories are so important in today's fashion. Uh, I feel like it finishes a look. Uh, so I definitely feel like jewelry is like an essential for your wardrobe. A hair and makeup studio, body painters, live DJ, and a bar were all part of the designer's pop-up event. So multi-dimensional, longtime followers Dahi and Shannon could not turn it down. The way that they reached out to me on social media was honestly just, um, you know, this is who we are, and if you think that this is uh, something that you're in line with, then just come on board. All of the pieces that are being showcased tonight were handmade by the designer herself. And what also is pretty cool about this event is the first 20 people that came through the door were able to get a free handmade piece. Some have some really cute chains and the jewelry is amazing. Very high quality, very custom made. I love it. I went to one of her events a couple months ago and I just absolutely love the jewelry and like the passion she has for all her jewelry. She puts a lot of time into it so I love it. Honestly, the body chains and the simple rings, it really reminded me how much you can do with such small and simple pieces. I know, definitely. Accessories were not the only big thing at New York Fashion Week. Samantha Johns joins us now with all the celebrity sightings we saw. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, ladies. Thanks so much for having me. New York Fashion Week brings out some of the biggest names in the industry, and this year was no different. We had the opportunity to talk to some of the celebrities who showed up and showed out. Yep, that's right. Tyler Cameron and Victoria Justice are among the celebrities we spoke with. I caught up with Tyler Cameron at Ana Ono's show where he told me what body positivity means to him. It's important. It's, uh, I mean, they, I, you can see as they were walking up on the stage, they got so much more confident as they got to the end of it. They started owning it. They started believing in themselves. and, and I mean, It was so moving and so powerful. And, I'm just so glad I could be a part of this. I definitely feel like it was a little bit crazy, but he was so friendly, and I've been following his journey. I don't know if you guys have watched The Bachelor, but it's really crazy to see how he's come up from just being a Florida you know, boy doing his thing, and now he's modeling in New York Fashion Week. Yeah, the thing. body positivity part of um, what he was talking about at the show was really interesting. He was just mentioning how he really felt like all of the models were doing such a great job and how confident they felt and he could feel from like the start to the end of the show, which is awesome. Victoria Justice was spotted at Rebecca Minkoff's show where she shared her thoughts on the designer's newest collection. Um, everything is so good. I love this presentation. Not only are the clothes cool, I love like the chic bohemian vibe, but she's also celebrating like being a mom and a mom on the go. I love that. And I think it was I think it was great that she talked a lot about, you know, mom on the go. I know that she isn't a mother herself, but even us, like, we can relate to a lot of the themes that were shown in that fashion show. Yeah, I mean, behind the scenes and, you know, looking at the show itself, there was a clear representation for moms, and that was so important for Rebecca Minkoff to kind of get into that and show people that you can be a mom and you can be a working mom, and even, that was so important. Right, and even, you know, moms-to-be or women on the go, it was just an up-and-coming thing theme that we're seeing more and more and I loved the different colors that she had there and yeah, it was great. It was beautiful. Janine Mason chatted with me after Nicole Miller's show to share why she's so proud to continue telling Liz's story on season two of Roswell, New Mexico. Season two of Roswell, New Mexico premieres in a month on March 16th on The CW um, and then will make its way eventually to Netflix um, <laughs> and uh, it, it, that's just been 
the dream. I, I, I love who I am. I love being from Miami. I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of being Cuban. I'm very proud of being a woman. And to bring all of that to this leading role on a network television series is something I, I don't take for granted for one minute. So what was it like for you, you know, running into her and interviewing her? I think that's so crazy. We're so used to seeing this person in Hollywood and in California on another side of the world, and we see her at Fashion Week. So wow. she was really connecting with the fact that she's a Latina, representing for Latina women on TV, and she started out as a dancer, and now she's gotten to grow her career, and I think it's amazing. It was so cool getting to see, like, where she's kind of picked herself up from the start. Yeah, that is cool. ASAP Tai also caught up with us at Global Collective's show to share what it's like to be an inspiration for his fans. To be an inspiration to the youth, you know, in this day and age, it's all about, you know what I mean, ex exploring and showing the youth how different and creative you can be in life. And it's not about what people think about you, and you can just be yourself. And I like to elaborate and touch on that every chance I get. So I think his jacket was like so much of an inspiration in itself. I mean, I think it's so crazy. I know he's tied kind of with ASAP Rocky. He's kind of tied with ASAP Ferg. And to be able to hear from someone like him about what he hopes to inspire, you know, viewers and other people at Fashion Week, um, it was just kind of cool, you know, to get a different point of view. Yeah. I think it's interesting because a lot of people look to celebrities for inspiration and they look to like the lyrics yeah. of their songs, but getting to hear from the fashion aspect side of it and kind of seeing how he can be a fashion icon in a certain way, even though he is a musician, is really inspiring and I think that that's really the whole reason why people come to Fashion Week. Yeah, that's so true. Those are the celebrity sightings we had at New York Fashion Week. Let's go to our reporter Maria Sato who attended the Oxford Fashion Show with some first-time designers. For their latest collection, the Oxford Fashion Studio brought together diversity in design. Working on the same stage, the nine designers had completely different styles on the runway. It's just unapologetically myself. I wanted to put like 110% of me into this, and I'm like so over the moon with how it turned out. This is my favorite one to date, for sure. 22-year-old designer and former junior project runway contestant Matt Sarafa says he expresses his own authenticity through the clothes he creates. Oh, that's how it's done. That's how it's done. It's pros and cons, but um, being 22, I feel like I have a really fresh perspective on the fashion industry. But regardless of my age, I do and make clothes that I like, and I like to wear my style, and people react to it. So that's all I can do. It's it's just it's me. It's 100% me. Next, we spoke with Christy Plus You, who is featured in several Vogue magazines. The brand is all about minimalism and making pieces that are reversible. It has like there's so many ways to wear it, like sometimes reversible or like like different fabric. You can buy one outfit, but you feel like you buy two outfits. And this year is Samantha Darianto's first time at New York Fashion Week. The Chinese Indonesian designer focuses on fusing different cultures together. Darianto wants her clothes to not only honor her parents' heritage, but to also share a story. It's going to be um, a lot of Indonesian and Chinese culture that's infused into like modern fashion. So it'll be like you'll see things like a chipao or like um, batik or kimono style things and then hopefully modernized into something wearable. The night combined industry professionals with growing designers for one of the first events of Fashion Week. From New York, I'm Maria Sato. I never would have expected so many different designers coming together to create one event as remarkably as they did this year. Reporter Emily Cristobal went to a premiere where guests mingled with designers over dinner. You know, this dinner kind of lets you connect more with the designer and the designers get to connect more with the press, media, buyers, influencers, so that they can, you know, get a preview and kind of just get to know the designers themselves. K.L. Allen, designer of Perfect Population and organizer of the event, explained that his goal was to provide more time for guests to look at the pieces rather than just seeing them on the runway for a few minutes. For this event, he invited two other up-and-coming designers, one of them being Yolanda King Johnson. I just like to take little fabric and turn it into a unique piece. Johnson is resourceful and creative, which can be seen in how she crafted a dress and jumpsuit completely out of neckties. These designs are even more impressive knowing that all her skills are self-taught. I started sewing in my house. Um, 
I just wanted my own my own clothes that I like. So I use YouTube, um, friends that I know that know how to sew. I like to pick brains. She says that she makes clothes for all people, no matter their size. I want you to be able to go in and see a Yolanda collection and it can fit you, being a big girl or a small girl. Another designer at the event was Jay Amore. I have been doing fashion since I was a kid, but I never looked at it as a career. As a former medical assistant, Amore changed his path to take on fashion. And for the first time, he is showcasing his line called The Strength of Love in New York Fashion Week. It really means a lot to me to be here because it shows a lot of support that I have that I didn't know that I had. After the break, we're taking you behind the curtains. You'll get a sneak peek into the hard work that goes into producing a fashion show. And our crew breaks down some of their favorite moments from the week. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to our WEBN special presentation. Every fashion show needs more than just models and designers. That's right. None of it would be possible without the makeup artists, hairdressers, stylists, and many more working off of the runway. Let's go to our behind the scenes correspondent, Elizabeth Perkin, with information on the offstage glamour. Hi ladies. While well, you may think that a runway show is just designers displaying their work, there's a lot more that goes into it than just that. From hair, makeup, and accessories, we're going to break it all down for you. To get the models runway ready, there's a team of hairstylists to help bring the designers' visions to life. We spoke with hairstylist Katie Spolte about how it's all done. Um, so the designers actually tell us what they want us to do and then uh, we'll have like one big class um, and the instructor, like our main guy, will show us how to do it and then, and then we just follow suit and he just kind of, he makes sure that we do it right. To go with hair, makeup artists enhance the model's beauty with some products. All of this to once again enhance the designer's clothes. It's a busy and fast-paced environment, getting all the mod models ready in time to strut down the runway. We spoke with two Japanese beauticians. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
interesting new brands that align nicely with Index. From behind the scenes of New York Fashion Week, that's all I have. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Elizabeth. Who knew so much took place behind the scenes to make a runway show happen? I know. From the hair, makeup, and stylists, it's a pretty crazy process. But now let's go to one of our executive producers, Natalie Benoit, who's with Maria Sato, Emily Cristobal, and Christine Park with Fashion Faves. Thanks, ladies. We are here to break down a few of our favorite moments from the shows we attended. This is Fashion Faves. So what I thought was really nice was I was able to interview people in Japanese and one of them was um, a hairstylist and a nail artist and I was impressed how people all around the world were um, impressed by their techniques and skills. I also talked to another Japanese designer who right. um, was mainly about like spreading love and also sustainability but the interesting thing was she was hiding her face. Yeah. So what yeah, do you guys I saw think that. about that? Yeah. She reminded me a little bit of like Sia, you know, the mm, singer yeah. Sia, yeah. who like for a while you would never know what her identity was. Yeah. So this designer kind of had that as part of her image, which I thought was really interesting. Like she didn't even want us to start rolling until she was like ready in her persona. Um, but she was really nice. Who was her translator? Um, a Miss Japan 2020 person. Um, she was also a translator, obviously, what you said. But that was really nice yeah. to talk to her. Um, the reason why she was c covering her face was because she didn't want her fashion line to be judged by, like, um, her fashion line is gender fluid as well as, like, ra uh, race versatile. So that was really cool. Really nice. When people think of New York Fashion Week, they also think about like high fashion, really expensive brands. But what I thought was really interesting is that we actually went to charity runways. So one of the places that we went to was Coastal Fashion Week. And what was really interesting is that they were putting on this runway for a cause. And for this specific runway, they decided to focus on suicide prevention, yeah. um, which is just a very important topic, especially for the founder and CEO of Coastal Fashion Week, because she actually lost her father to suicide. Yeah. That's a shame. But, but yeah. it seems like it was a great movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there were lots of like designers who mm -hmm. contributed their profit to like organizations and that's really nice. Yeah, definitely. And that just shows like the breadth of fashion. It's not only to like make a profit, but it's also like for the people to spread awareness and all of that. 100%. Um, I had the opportunity actually, I went to the Sustainability New York Fashion Week show and with that one there was Sully's Knits and that was a mother and daughter business where this daughter, Jodi Kamal, was selling her mother, who's 77 years old, um, handmade products that she made. And it was the first time it was at New York Fashion Week. And like, she was just amazing and she had a lot to say and we have a clip of it right now. Two years ago, she picked it up because I started traveling and she said, uh, what do I do with my time? I said, you start doing crochet. So when I was coming to New York for this fashion show, I said, this is the place where it's cold right now and people will love to get something which is handmade. She just wants people to use it because she's made it with love. That's what I think is the sustainability for her. So my personal favorite moment of Fashion Week was probably when the, on the first day our team went to Sun Jung Won show. It was our first show and we had a little bit of difficulty navigating our way, but um, we were able to get to where we were supposed to be and we ended up getting amazing content for our special. And then it was like really nice to see the behind the scenes, talk to a few of the models, talk to the actual designer and actually see the show. So. What I thought was an interesting moment was when the designer said that it was her first show where her son was walking in the runway. Whoa. So her son was actually involved and I thought it was like nice that a family could come together through a fashion show. And he was like a model for the show and it was his first time modeling? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly <laughs> when he like walked but I think, yeah, it was his first time opening for his mom, so. That's so exciting. That's yeah, really That's really nice, bringing family together just like Sully's Nets does. Yeah, it was really sweet. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's great a great connection. connection. Yeah. Oh, little, yeah. Also little kids modeling. Uh, oh, the yes, way. Yeah, the yeah, global yeah. collective one. Yeah. There were some uh, children walking around. As well as flying like, solo, so yeah. Yeah. that was really cute. Yeah. Well, from Fashion Faves, we turn it back to you, Kristen and Martha. Thanks, ladies. New York Fashion Week was such an amazing experience. From world-famous designers to the models on the runway, WEBN was there to cover the first several days of the Big Apple's unforgettable fashion events. Thank you for watching this special presentation of New York Fashion Week 2020, A Walk Down the Runway. I'm Kristen Bullier. And I'm Martha Constantinides. See more of our coverage on our website, webn.tv. And follow us on Instagram at webn underscore Boston. Or our Twitter, webn underscore entertain. We'll see you next time with more on the latest in entertainment.